What's going on everyone? This is Jay from Premier Gaming Entertainment here to bring to you my takeaway and analysis video for this week 2 game versus Hawaii. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, I, I know there's not really a whole lot that I'm going to get into deeply as far as you know the, uh, the, the, the defense and all that stuff. I'm not going to get too deep into that. Uh, I'm actually surprised that the game was as close as it was. I know 56 to 10 is not close, but um, Michigan could have easily scored a lot more than this. They took the foot way off the gas pedal. Uh, if you want to make an argument, it was the score was more indicative of being like something like I don't know 70 to 80 more, uh, points really is what I thought they were going to score. But they took the the pedal off the gas big time. So, you know, I was excited to see this game from the standpoint of seeing what J.J. could do if he was the guy. I was excited to see what happened if he was the guy taking all the snaps from start to finish. You know, not just coming in and doing a gadget play, a gimmick play here, uh, maybe a, you know, a set of plays here and there, and then going back to the bench. I was interested to see how he was going to start the game, how he was going to finish the game, uh, you know, his command of the playbook and, um, you know, all that stuff. And he definitely did his thing. Um, I don't think there's any, there was any doubt or any, you know, reservation about him being the starter from this point going forward. I think that's all should be put to rest. Uh, so, you know, when I was watching the first game and then watching the second game, I didn't understand what Harbaugh was doing. You know, they said that, you know, Cade was going to start the game versus Colorado State. Then J.J. was going to start the game versus Hawaii. And, and now I understand, and it puts it all to rest even more. Because I, I, I figured they were just going to give Cade all the snaps in game one, give J.J. all the snaps in game two, and then kind of evaluate it from there. But I'm glad he didn't do that now after watching this game. Because people are just going to say, oh, well, it was just Hawaii. You know, Hawaii's way worse than the Colorado State. Look what happened in the Colorado State game. So if Kate had had a, you know, even a so-so game and played the whole game, and then JJ came and lit it up versus Hawaii. Then people would just say, oh, well, Colorado State is just that much better, better than Hawaii. That's why JJ looks so good. And then there would still be some doubt. But he allowed JJ to play in the mop up duty of Cade, and then allowed Cade to play in the mop up duty of JJ. So there was some crossover from that. There was actually some good analysis that should be able to be looked at so it can be judged fairly. You can't now say that, oh, well, JJ just did that against Hawaii. Look how Hawaii is. K had his opportunity versus this, that same Hawaii team, if not even less of a Hawaii team, because at that point in time they were getting kicked, their asses kicked. So there's probably not even the same quality Hawaii team so Cade should have been lighting it up like J.G. was lighting up Colorado State in the previous game in the mop of duty. But that didn't happen. So, first and foremost, J.G., when he was in there, just like in the Colorado State game, just electric. Um, I think that they would have scored on every single time that J.J. was in there, except uh, one series where Ronnie Bell dropped the ball. And that's, you know, not sure what's up with that with him dropping the ball. He struggled really the first couple of games. You know he had a really good game statistically. This game, including the touchdown, he had another drop, fumbled the football. So hopefully he can get back into being the guy that was a dominant force, you know, over the course of the season. 
But the offense just looks so much different with JG in there. I mean, for one, the defense has to respect his running ability. So it's not just a matter of, well, I'm just going to hand it off. And if I hand it off, the defense can just, you know, crash down to the running back right away. They can't do that because there's a fear that J.J. might actually keep the ball and take off in the opposite direction. So it forces the perimeter players of the defense to become decision makers. And if you're a defensive end, you're not trying to make a decision. You're just trying to rush the quarterback. You're just trying to get downfield as fast as possible. But when you got a guy like that who can do RPO like that, now you you can't just... You have to actually start thinking. You actually have to do something different with your whole alignment, how you rush the quarterback. you got to make a decision. Do I take the running back or do I take the quarterback? And the quarterback, on the other hand, is making a decision on what decision you make encountering that so it just it totally and completely changes the defense from the standpoint of the defense trying to do something against us because of that big play running ability and while we didn't necessarily see that a whole lot in this game we didn't have to as far as seeing JJ run the ball all we just needed to do is just see him in there and just the, th the threat of him taking off was w it was good enough. So, man, I, I thought this game was over after the, the the second play of the game. I mean, it was like a hot knife through butter when JJ was in the game. They were able just to move the football easily, score at will, do whatever they wanted to do. And it just wasn't the same thing when G uh, when Cade was in there. When Cade came in there, the defense looked pedestrian. I mean, he uh, he got sacked. Uh, I actually stopped watching the game after uh, pretty much. I think after like the second series that Cade came in there and and stunk up the place. I was through watching the game. I only really came on to see whether or not he was going to do anything versus what J.J. did, and he didn't do anything. Got sacked twice. After I stopped watching, he threw an interception. Now remember, this is the same team that J.J.'s lighting up. It's just like the team just didn't react to him being in there. You know... Or Jake Butt saying that they weren't really giving him an opportunity to do anything. Um, you know, the, the drops didn't help, obviously. But Kate just looks like just looks like a statue out there. Um, I remember watching the, him get get sacked, and I'm thinking to myself, if that was JJ in there. He wouldn't have got sacked because JJ would have just he would have just somehow found found a way to avoid that. Step around it, run around it, run away from it. His mobility um, is just way better than Cade's. I'm not even talking about the, the mobility of running the football. I'm just talking about moving around in the pocket. That last uh, touchdown throw to Cornelius Johnson was a thing of beauty. You know, move, thrown on the run. Stepped up when the pressure came. Just stepped up and threw an absolute dart to the corner end of the Cornelius Johnson. Do I think that Cade could do anything even remotely like that? No. And that's part of the problem. That's been the problem. From watching this game, to me anyways, it's obvious that when Cade is in there, they don't the 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 playbook is not open. When Cade is in there. It's limited. There's only certain plays that they run when Cade is in there. And there's certain plays that are just off limits. They're not gonna they're not gonna even try it. Versus Colorado State, how many times did 
Cade legitimately take a, a, a shot down the field. I just don't think that they trust him to do it. I think that they're scared that if they call a play for him to take a deep shot down the field or uh, like a long out or something like that with his arm, they just don't trust it. And that's why they don't see you don't see him taking shots down the field when he's in there. I remember last year and then the two years previous to that, just screaming into my TV, why won't these guys take shots down the field? Why won't they do it? Why won't they keep the defense honest? If you've been watching my videos, I've been harping on that for three years. I could never understand why. But now I understand why. They didn't have a guy in there that they trusted to, to legitimately take a shot down the field um, and not be worried about the ball being, dying in the wind or being significantly underthrown in at least an interception. That is the reason why it was a rarity for Michigan to take shots down the field because it's just not something that he does well. You know, he's got a, a wet noodle for an arm. Let's just face it. Because of that, whoever it is that they're targeting down the field, they got to be just way open for them to make that type of attempt. And that's, that's the problem right there. So, Kate had his chance. He had two chances, really. I think if he had came in this game and balled out and threw, like, a match JJ's performance, you know, scored three touchdowns, looked amazing running the offense, regardless of whether it was Hawaii or not, all he had to do was just match the same energy and add, match the same pr productivity that J.J. did. And that would have left doubt with Harbaugh. But none of that happened. His team was totally and completely different with J.J. in there versus when Kate is in there. So, in my eyes anyways, I don't think there's any more doubt as far as who should be that starting quarterback going on. Uh, as far as when we play Connecticut and just for the rest of the season this in general. This is JJ's team. Period. So. Um, I'm not going to get in depth with the grading or anything like that. It's Hawaii. Um, you know. We could have easily scored, like I said, at least 80, 90 points on these guys. If we had kept the starters in, uh, if JJ was playing this the game from start to finish, we could have easily scored more than 56 points. But it doesn't matter. It honestly doesn't matter. As long as we won the game, we won it easily, got in whatever data that we needed to get in, from you know, watching the two guys play um, and evaluating from there. As long as all of that was done, nobody, he got significantly injured. That's all I'm happy about. I'm sure that's all the coaching said is happy about too. So, um, you know, that's why everybody wants JJ to be the guy moving forward. Cade is, he's just limited. He can't throw down the field. It's a lot of dinking and dunking, a lot of short to immediate, intermediate passes, but he's no deep threat at all. And defenses play, in general, just play him differently than they would JJ. That's why I think JJ is the guy. I think... When J.J. is in there, the whole entire playbook is open up. And because of that, defenses can't just focus in on, oh, let's stop the running game, let's stop the short side of the field. If we do these things, then 
JJ is not going to, I mean, Kate is not going to be do, able to do anything. You can't do that if JJ's in the game. If you, if you press up too hard, JJ is going to call play to go over the top and has the arm strength to do it. He can scramble, which means that the defense has to play him honestly. It means that there's one more person to block if he decides to take off. It opens up RPO because nobody is going to respect uh, Cade being in there for a run, pla run pass option. They know he's never going to run the football. But what if he? What if there's a quarterback that was in there who actually did? It just changes everything. So I hope that Harbaugh has seen the light and decides from this point going forward that JJ is the guy. Anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll probably have another video uh, either probably on Monday. Not sure what it's going to be about, but it's going to be, you know, obviously still Mich Michigan football, but more of a general video. So we'll con look forward to seeing that shortly. Anyways, that's it for, it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, Please feel free to leave a like on the video. Thank you for everyone that has lately. It's definitely helped out my channel. So definitely like the video. Um, let me know how you felt in the comment section below. Do you think it's JJ, JJ's team now? Do you think that the door is still open for Cade? Let me know how you felt in the comment section below as far as that. And uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, the, the channel is growing slowly but surely. But... Thank you, everyone, who has subscribed as of late. I really appreciate that. And make sure to click the bell and turn off notifications um, just so you'll never miss any videos that I post. Anyways, thank you for watching. And as always, go blue.